Hey there, so today we're back in the shop and we're going to do a little uh, uh, more shop organization. As you can see, the rack behind me, it's all held on by French cleats. And so I've been slowly making, if you've been following my blog, uh, I've been making some racks and stuff for my tools that I use every day. Uh, the stuff that I want close at hand and for some of it just the stuff that I want to get out of the way. So uh, this is all in an attempt to try to keep my bench top as clear as possible. If everything's close that I can put it up then I know where it goes. It goes in the same place every time and my bench top is clear and it's it's ready for me to, to start working again. So um, I've done a couple so I'll take you on a tour of those uh, a little bit later but uh, what I'm going to be working on right now is actually a uh, a clamp rack, a clamp storage rack. All right, so here we're looking at my current clamp rack. Uh, that's kind of what I call it. I do put them back every time. And what I do have is, is so I know what's where, I know where everything goes. Here's all my quick, uh, quick release clamps, um, just the, the press clamps. And then I've got my F clamps here, uh, varying sizes. And so this is where uh, I really want to get these out of the way. I do find that they're in my way sometimes. Uh, as I'm working, they're a little bit tough to get. These are on the back side. Um, now that I've got my my, uh, my my lathe back in operation, uh, it's it's more out in the shop a little bit, so it's a little bit close to this. Um, I can't I can't get to them. What I did here is I just put a dowel. Uh, you can see that. Just put a dowel through um, this leg and the other leg, and then that's what the the uh, quick grip quick grip clamps. So. Uh, Rest these chisels, if I don't like where they're at, I can just pick them up and I can move them to another place on the wall. If I can get my other stuff out of the way. Yeah, I know I'm yeah. knocking stuff over. I have uh, speaker wires I haven't figured out exactly how I want to route them yet. But I can move those there. So if I like this position better, then what I can do is I can just take my chisel rack, move it up here, and it's good to go. If, it's, if I decide that I didn't like it there, I want to go back to the original place. Put them right back there. So that's kind of the advantage of this cleat system. So uh, it's something that it doesn't take a whole lot to put in the wall, so I don't have a ton of big cabinets or um, big holes in the wall. What I've got is just uh, some, some strips of wood with an angle cut in the top and that's it. And that's the only thing that's actually mounted to the wall. So they're screwed into the studs, nice and sturdy, they'll hold a lot All of right, weight. Alright, so now I've gotten started. I've kind of picked out a, a 2x6 and like I said I'm going to put dowels through this to actually hold my clamp. So what I've got is, is my 2x6 here. I'll show you. So I have my 2x6. This one's going to be for my F-style clamps, so these guys here. And what I did is I marked a center line across there. I don't know if you can see that in the video. But there's a center line across there. And so now I'm just getting the width of, of this piece. I'm getting the width of, of my, uh, my clamp. So based on the width of my clamp, what I want is I want my dowels to rest just wide enough that I can slide these in and out fairly easily. So I've marked it on each side and these will stick out and then these will just and the clamps will just rest on it. So the the goal here is to just try to get as many as I can on this piece. So I've been kind of playing with some layouts and I'll have to do a little bit a little bit more with it. So that's why I've got several clamps here. I'll probably do them at uh, different lengths as I go across. Um, you know, the, as far as the clamps, the dowels positions themselves will be the same, but uh, so that's why I've just picked up my smaller ones because they have the same um, same width of the the neck there. So I'll take these, I'll mark these all the way down, and we'll see what we can get and how many I can get on there. I'll probably be able to stack them. I'm gonna leave these aren't too heavy, so I'll be leaving the dowels fairly long to where I can stack up. Uh, you know, maybe five of them per uh, per positions. So we'll see how we get. Hey there. So now I'll show you what I've got so far. Okay. So here we have um, the board. You can see it doesn't go all the way through. I've already drilled the holes in this. And so now I've got these spaced um, 
to where my clamps will fit. I didn't go all the way through because I'm going to glue this, and and uh, there are a couple small holes in the back, but I can tape those up pretty easy. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to to insert the glue, move it around a little bit before I insert the dowels, and that will um, keep the glue inside rather than going all the way through and allowing the glue to just fall out the back, get all of my workbench or whatever I have underneath it. Um, so now that the holes are done, now I have to actually make the rail that, that sits on the back. That rail is cut at 45 degrees. All of the rails that you see up on my shop, so all of these rails here, have a bevel on the top side. And that top bevel, I have an example here. Um, that top bevel, as you can see, uh, is, is angled. And what the other piece is going to do is it's going to rest on top of it and it's going to anchor itself to the wall. So I've already got these sitting on the wall. Now I need to make a piece uh, just for this piece, uh, just for this this rack clamp or clamp rack that will rest on top of this and hold itself against the wall. So that's what I'm doing now. And as I generally use uh, pretty much just hand tools, uh, the holes, by the way, uh, you can I used a brace and bit to put those in, just three quarter inch. That's the size dowel that I had. Um, you can do smaller. You can do bigger. Uh, don't go too small unless you're just going to have one clamp in that position or maybe two clamps. Um, one thing I did do is just kind of set the dowels over the end of my workbench and allow them and then kind of hang some things on it to see how much weight they could actually hold. Um, as far as the cleat holding this onto the wall, I have no issues there, no doubts that it's going to be able to hold my clamps. So now what I'm doing is I'm cutting a, a new um, piece to fit on the back, a new cleat. Uh, that's going to hold this piece up onto the wall. So I've already cut it to length. Um, I cut it by hand. Uh, and here you can see I've started my cut. So uh, currently I don't have a really nice rip saw, so I'm just doing it using an uh, inexpensive um, Japanese pull saw. I do like the way they work, for, especially for ripping. They're not too bad. Um, but if you want an inexpensive, something that cuts pretty well, you cannot resharpen it. Uh, so that's kind of a loss, um, but a rip saw, like I said, is what I currently don't have anything that that's uh, really good at right now, even for softwood like this. So, so we're gonna cut this down. And your lines here, as you go through this, as you're cutting uh, this 45 degree angle, I just marked it with a combination square. But as you're cutting it, one thing that you can keep in mind is that you can go back at the end and take your hand plane and true up the edge. So you get a little bit of waviness or something like that. Not a big deal. I'll show you uh, how you can, can, can uh, put these together, plane them together, uh, and then you wind up with a, a pretty good 45 degree uh, angle and then you can just smooth it out and everything works from there okay so i'm going to go finish this up and we'll be right back as i attach it and i can show you how to uh to clean up that angle all right all right so here we are on the other side of the bench i just got my two pieces cut actually the one piece cut in half so here you've got the rough cut piece um you can see that i don't know if you can notice it there but it's not exactly straight uh, there is a couple humps to it and it's not smooth so the smoothness I'm not too worried about but the more surface area I get just in, in thinking about it the more surface area I get that touches the better off I'm going to be so I'm going to take this I'm going to take a, a block plane first and then I'm going to go over it with a, um, a joiner plane a number seven Stanley and I'm going to uh, smooth this out so I'm going to get some of the high spots out uh, take it down, see where I can, you know, make sure I get a, a clean shaving with my block plane, then I'll go back with my number seven, and then uh, I should have a nice, straight, smooth um, jointed so surface. So now what I'm going to do is take my block plane, and it's pretty easy because the angle's pretty much already there. I'll check the angle again here in just a little bit. But right now I'm not worried about the angle, I'm just worried about the high spots. So 
this will tell you how straight your edge was. I don't know if you can see the difference there, but you've got kind of a little bit rough here and it's smooth here. Where it's smooth, this is where my block plane's actually been able to go. But if you look here, you see some of the original saw marks still in there. So we still have some nice spots. Now, now we can take it. We've got most of the high spots out. There's still a couple there. What we're going to do is we're going to do this with the joiner plane. So let me grab my joiner. Okay. Had this set up earlier. I was taking a little bit heavier shaving, so I'm going to back it off just a little bit. Okay. Let's see what we can cut. Okay. Looks like I just about got it. So we'll double check my angle. The previous piece. So if I get the two surfaces completely square. As far as this surface and this surface, my angle should line up, and it does. So very good. Okay, so now I've taken uh, my backing board where the posts go into, the one that I drilled the holes in. So I'm going to take that board, and I've already smoothed out the back side. This back side is now nice and flat, so it'll rest up really well up against my wall. Or at least and I went ahead and the did the entire is. back. So. Um, it, you know, originally it was for glue, then I decided to go ahead and change that. Uh, I was already on a roll and I like using my hand plane, so uh, creating some shavings was not a bad deal at all. So now I'm going to take it and flip it over and I'm going to do this side as well. So uh, I'll show you a little bit of that in uh, my number seven joiner plane that I still have to clean up, but I got it working. Get this in the vise here. Just tight. One thing I noticed is it did have a twist in it, so that's part of what I'm taking out is in why I'm using my joiner. Um, because the twist was just enough to make it rock on the table. So I'll just try to go ahead and get it out with uh, with this. So I'm taking a little bit off at a time, but it's only gonna hit in a couple places because again, this piece was not flat whenever I grabbed it. Alright, so that's a pretty good, uh, got it pretty flat. I'm taking shavings off all the way across, so that's kind of nice. Um, I, I would love to get some of this out so I could plane it down a little bit farther. Uh, it's got some uh, tear out or something from, from the saw uh, from the mill, but otherwise it's, uh, it's pretty good. I like it. Um, I don't really need to take it down much more than that. Clamps are going to cover this thing anyway, so uh, and it is for my shop, so I, I do have to draw the line somewhere. So we'll clean some of this up and we'll get ready for the glue up. Okay, so now we're ready for the glue up. Uh, I've got both sides faced. I also faced the, the uh, cleat here so that way it'll rest nice and smooth against the 2x6 that I've got. And that will give me the pretty much everything I need to put it up on my wall. Uh, only thing left after this is actually going to be putting in the cutting the dowels and putting those in place. So here we go on the glue up. Uh, one thing to keep in mind as you're gluing up, have, go ahead and have your clamps ready. Uh, that way you're not hunting for those while your glue is already setting up. Uh, and I'm just using a regular uh, yellow wood glue. And uh, also remember whenever you put this on that the cleat, you should not actually see the angle. You should see the flat piece on the outside whenever you put this on. That is because that is what is going to sit inside 
the piece on the wall. So make sure you've got it facing the right way before you go ahead and glue it and screw it down or anything else that you're gonna do. All right, here we go. good and we'll go ahead and let that set up and we'll come back and we'll start putting the dowels in okay uh, so now what you can do is is now that you've got your your uh, cleat in place you can screw it down if you want to um, you don't have to necessarily the wood's gonna or the glue is gonna be uh, stronger than the wood will actually be um, but so I screwed it went ahead and screwed it in place because that's uh, it was a little bit faster, that way I can go ahead and get on with the instructions and I can show everybody what uh, uh, what to do next. So it's glued, it's screwed on, the glue is actually starting to set pretty well right now. Uh, and now you've got a piece that looks like this, okay? But you'll notice depending on how you put in your holes for your, uh, for your dowels, you can wind up with small holes out the back side. Again, I said I didn't want to drill all the way through, and I didn't. But these small holes are from the abrasive bit, bit would have worked just fine. Um, I used those actually on the, on the first couple holes, um, and it went pretty quick. Not bad. The Forstner bit was quite a bit faster. Uh, so now you've got these little holes that stick out the back. And I said, you know what, we really want to watch out for that because what happens is, is that whenever you go to glue the dowels in, you're going to get glue kind of seeping out the back. I don't want that because what that's going to do is if glue comes out the back, then I'm going to have to scrape all that stuff off. Um, not that I'm lazy, but I'm lazy. So we're going to go ahead and fix that. We'll go ahead and clean off your piece. And then what you do is you just take masking tape put it over the holes. So here we've got the piece. I've, as you can, if you were to leave it on here just like this, it wouldn't sit up straight. So just uh, prop that up with a couple extra boards that you have laying around. And I've got the tape on the back side, uh, so the holes are facing up. I've cut all my dowels, uh, not pretty, but they work. And I've taken each one and I have fit each one and they each go in with a little bit of uh, a little bit of effort. So that's good. What we're going to do what I want. is take the glue. And the glue bottles are really nice. Uh, if you can buy the, the extra ones. These are not exactly made for this. Uh, but put some glue down in the bottom. And I can take that. And I can spread it around that bottom there. change in the sound there that means it's hit the bottom so there we go we got one in so now only nine, 11 more to go all right so here we are with the finished clamp rack uh, it sits on the wall nice and sturdy doesn't move and each of these dowels holds four clamps uh, each of these spaces so as you can see I've got three here and three here I've just separated them by size pretty much um, my F clamps over here, my quick grip clamps uh, over here, and this is a small one. I can easily make it uh, uh, quite a bit larger to hold all the clamps they eventually I want to own. Uh, but I wanted to try out the design. It looks like it's going to hold up really well. Uh, so with it this small, what I can also do is I can also use this a little bit higher on my shelf or on my uh, uh, my wall cleats. And so I can move this up and then I can put some longer ones below it or I can move it off to the side a little bit if I have whenever I get my longer ones up. 
So definitely, um, as far as just there. a quick concept, cutting up uh, one dowel and, and one two by six works great. It's exactly what I was looking for. So right now, this gets them off of my other uh, area. They're within easy reach. I can quickly take them on, take them off, or put them, put them on, take them off, and uh, it does everything that it's supposed to do. It holds my clamps in place, nice and organized. And uh, to me, it's a project well done. Thanks. Sawdust and everything else off. Take that. Oops. <laughs>